It's week one of the 2023 Laundry Basket Quilt Mystery Quilt, and it has been confirmed that this year's design is inspired by gardens. Uh, this week we're making eight leaf blocks in two different sizes, and since my color palette is like pinky purples with gray, I'm going to try to be strategic because none of my fabrics really scream foliage. I'm going to have to make it work. So far, I'm thinking that the grays and those sort of dusty purples uh, will work well for leaves and stems and things. And then I'll save my more saturated colors for the flowers. As for my background, I had every intention of changing it out, finding something new, but I just never made it to the fabric store. So I'm just gonna hope for the best because uh, that's what I've got. I also wanna mention that yesterday I prepped all of my fabric with Mary Ellen's Best Press. It makes things really structured and less likely to stretch. I almost made a video all about best press, but then I was like, I don't know if people actually want to see this, <laughs> so I abandoned that one. If you do want to see that, then let me know in the comment section and I might get that together for you. Here is my block one, and here is my block two. All of my background squares have these diagonal lines here. Um, you will just need one for the center for a regular block, but I add this extra one because I like to not waste fabric and get all those bonus half square triangles. So marked on the back of both of these and on the back of this one too, because I'm gonna do two at a time half square triangles instead of one at a time, just my preference. For block number one, I'm going to chain stitch without pinning. So I'm gonna take my main color and one of the background squares and line them up like this so that my main diagonal is here and then my extra diagonal is out to the corner. And then I'm gonna stitch right down the center of that line. And actually one of my favorite ways to do stitch and flip corners is to sew just to the right of that line. You get a little bit more wiggle room when you are um, squaring up and it makes for a nicer finish, in my opinion. But since I'm at such a weird angle right here with my camera, I can't really tell if I'm managing to get it. Oh, I just realized <laughs> I sewed that wrong. So much for chain stitching right sides together and I did right and wrong. So I gotta rip that out. Now that that first seam is done, I'm gonna come through and add my next squares, just like before. After that second set of seams is sewn, I'm gonna come back through and I'm going to sew this extra seam here. Then I can cut everything apart. For these stitch and flip corners, I actually like to press before I cut off the excess because you get a little bit of added stability in your seam before you cut on that bias edge and introduce the um, possibility of stretch. So all I do is I tuck it under like so and then I give it a quick finger press. Then I'll introduce the iron, give it a better press. And then I'll flip it around and do the same thing on the other corner. Give it a good press. And then when it's time to cut those pieces apart, I just take a pair of good scissors and I eyeball a straight line down those seams. Like so. And I've got my bonus half square triangle and I can press that too. So there I have my first four blocks and a bunch of bonus little half square triangles. Block two is very similar to block one, but first we have to make some half square triangles, some big half square triangles. So I'm gonna layer them together so they overlap perfectly. And then I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on both sides of this line. So a quarter inch on this side I'm going to flip it around and then I'll do a quarter inch on the other side. 
And I'm actually going to do a little bit of a scant quarter inch here just for a little bit extra wiggle room when I am squaring up. Then turn it around, give a little pull just for a little uh, space right there, and do it all again. I went ahead and cut my half square triangles apart before I pressed. So while I'm pressing, I'm going to try and keep a very close eye on that seam so that I don't stretch it out and be very gentle with it. Then after I'm done pressing, I'm going to square it up to the correct size. And much like the last block, I'm going to add in the stitch and flip corners. And since we've already gone over this stitch and flip, let's go ahead and head over to the finished block. And there we go, week one is done. We started at a nice slow pace with just eight blocks that came together very quickly. So I am really looking forward to the rest of this mystery quilt. I can't wait to see what kind of flowers we're gonna make and what the applique element is gonna be. And we can already see that this isn't gonna be a simple grid quilt because we've got two different sizes blocks here. So I can't wait to see how it all comes together and um, I look forward to seeing you again real soon. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you again next week.